This presentation considers the solubility of the halogens. By the end of the presentation, you ought to be able to compare the solubility of the halogens in polar and non-polar solvents. You ought to be able to describe the appearance of solutions of the halogens in those two different types of solvent. And you also ought to be able to explain why the use of a non-polar solvent such as cyclohexane can help with the identification of halogens in aqueous solution. One of the solvents you need to consider is water. Uh, and if we think about water molecules, are water molecules polar? It's a question you should be able to answer by now. What do you think? Yes, they are polar. There's the OH bond, significant difference in electronegativity. Oxygen is significantly more electronegative than hydrogen, and so on. What about the halogen molecules? Are they polar? Well, no. Cl2, Br2, identical atoms involved uh, in the bonds there, so can't be polar. How does this relate to solubility? Well, the key idea here is that non-polar molecules, such as the halogens, do not tend to mix well with polar molecules, such as water. And so halogens, for this reason, have low solubility in water. They do dissolve to a certain extent, though, and they give solutions of differing colours to some extent. So if you have a look at the table here, we can see that chlorine uh, dissolves a bit in water to make a colourless or very pale yellow solution. Bromine uh, also dissolves a bit in water, slightly more coloured, yellow to orange kind of solution. And iodine um, also dissolves a little bit, giving yellow, orange to brown kind of solution. The exact colour depends on the concentration. So a dilute solution of iodine in water uh, is pale yellow, a very concentrated one uh, would be more brown. When things are dissolved in water we call those aqueous solutions. So what we're talking about here are aqueous solutions. The other solvent that gets commonly talked about with the halogens is cyclohexane and we'll consider solubility in cyclohexane. Again, the question here is to do with the polarity or non-polarity of the molecules. We've already said the halogen molecules are non-polar. What about cyclohexane molecules? Well, no, they aren't polar. They're non-polar molecules, just carbons and hydrogens, uh, so no polar bonds there. The same principle applies about things mixing. So now we have non-polar halogens with non-polar cyclohexane molecules, and that will mix well. So this doesn't just apply to cyclohexane. Any non-polar uh, liquid can act as a good solvent for the halogen molecule. So halogens have high solubility in non-polar solvents, such as cyclohexane. Again, they give coloured solutions. Uh, and so looking at the table here, we've got chlorine making a pale yellow solution, Bromine in cyclohexane making a decidedly orange solution. And iodine, uh, a complete change from the aqueous solution, making a purple solution in cyclohexane. We've said that the halogens in aqueous solution can all have a sort of yellow appearance. So if you're presented with an aqueous solution of a halogen, it can be rather difficult to determine which halogen you've got present. So we need a way of uh, making that decision, a way of testing to see which halogen is present in an aqueous solution. And the answer here is that we can shake the solution with cyclohexane, or another non-polar solvent. Uh, if we do that, we get a very easy aid to identification. Now, uh, you need to know that when you leave it to settle, the cyclohexane will form a separate layer to the water uh, floating on top of the water. So there'll be an upper cyclohexane layer and a lower aqueous layer. And whereas for the aqueous solutions, we might have had all just these yellowy colours uh, for the cyclohexane on the upper layer, we get quite distinctive colours for the halogens. You can be asked to give an explanation uh, for the way in which cyclohexane acts as a good test for the halogen present in aqueous solution. And there's a few specific points that you need to be able to uh, recall from memory and explain here. So we'll, we'll run through those. Um, the first is this idea of two separate layers. So if you get asked to explain why two layers form, uh, you need to say that water and cyclohexane do not mix. The fancy word for that is that they are immiscible liquids and you can see the spelling there in red. So 
For liquids that don't mix, when you leave them to settle, you'll get two separate layers. You might also be asked uh, to explain the idea that the cyclohexane is the upper layer and the water is the lower layer. Now this is, uh, in addition to the fact they're immiscible, uh, the idea of density. So when you do have two immiscible liquids, whichever liquid is less dense will be the upper layer, and whichever liquid is more dense will be the lower layer. So cyclohexane being less dense than water makes the upper layer, water being more dense than cyclohexane makes the lower layer. Uh, finally, we've got the idea of why you actually bother doing this. So what, that you get two layers? Well, it's the idea of the colours. Um, so you need to point out that the colour of the halogen is both more distinctive in the cyclohexane. So, for instance, iodine is purple, whereas bromine is orange. Easy to tell apart. Uh, it's also more intense because they're more soluble in the cyclohexane. Uh, so they dissolve very well in the cyclohexane uh, and give you quite an intense colour. Here's a question then for you to check if you've got to grips with these ideas. Um, look at the yellow scenario here. Imagine you had a aqueous solution of halogen, pale yellow in colour. You wanted to know what halogen was present. So you shook it with a bit of cyclohexane and you ended up with the result that you see on the right there. Two layers, orange upper layer, colourless lower layer. What halogen was present at the start? And... Which layer is the cyclohexane layer? Well, hopefully you decided that it must be bromine. Uh, bromine gives this orange colour in cyclohexane. Chlorine would only be a pale yellow. Iodine would be purple. Secondly, you should have decided that the cyclohexane is the upper layer because cyclohexane is less dense than water.